It's Wednesday, October 12, 2022. We have a lot to talk about today. Markets just closed. Markets across the board closed in the red today. Uh, just a lot of anticipation waiting on the CPI tomorrow. PPI came in today higher than expected. We'll talk about that in a minute. But as I'm watching some of these financial channels today, uh, they're saying that central bank actions will have severe consequences as they are begging for the Fed to pivot. Watching these economists, the, the anchors, the analysts, all begging and hoping for a pivot and talking about the severe consequences that the central banks are causing across the globe, but yet they don't talk about the severe consequences that all the money printing, all of the QE, the helicopter money, the 0% interest rates, the buying into these markets, the buying of mortgage-backed securities, uh, the, the buying of bonds, nobody talks about that. All they do is beg and hope for a pivot, and they don't seem to understand the threat or the danger of hyperinflation that will come about if the Fed does decide to pivot at some point. And they don't talk about the cause of all this, which is all the money printing, which is the buying of mortgage-backed securities, which is uh, the super ultra-low rates, the ultra-low mortgage rates. Uh, this is what has caused this inflation right now. And so they are begging and hoping that the Fed reverses course and continues uh, this destruction and causing more inflation. They'd rather have the markets up uh, and have you deal with hyperinflation. So it's really incredible watching uh, some of these people on the television. So I just wanted to note that, but let's get right into this. Matt just sent me this article from The Hedge. FMOC minutes show hawkish Fed warn cost of doing too little outweigh cost of doing too much. Uh, this is what some of the members of the Fed said today that there is more of a cost to do too little than too much. And I think that you have to read between the lines here and that definitely uh, sounds the alarm that we're going to see more rate hikes and bigger rate hikes coming and you're going to see uh, this economy completely seize up. The economy has been bad for a very, very long time, but it is going to get much, much worse as they get more aggressive to try and fight inflation. Wholesale inflation rises more than expected in September with prices jumping 8.5%. This is gonna to continue to squeeze every American household in this country and it's gonna squeeze uh, businesses across this country, especially small and medium businesses. They're really gonna feel the pressure. Uh, so we got the PPI jumping 8.5%. What does this mean for the CPI that we're going to get tomorrow? Now, they could completely, and this is, we have to be aware of this, they could completely rig the data tomorrow and we could get a much lower than anticipated CPI. Markets would love that. They could go up 2,000 points, um, you know, on the hopes that the Fed now, uh, th that these rate hikes are, are taking an effect and making a difference. And so maybe then the Fed would slow it down and ease up. But they would have to, in my opinion, rig the data. Now, what do you think? Comment down below. Would love to know what you think about this. The CPI number tomorrow, is it going to be higher, lower, or about the same? Will it be rigged? Will it not be rigged? We know that a lot of this data is being manipulated daily, but the CPI tomorrow is a big one. If uh, we see a large improvement uh, with CPI, you can bet the markets are going to love it and we're gonna see a huge uptick tomorrow. Now, if, if, they, if the CPI stays the same, goes up, or even comes down just a little bit, uh, I think we're gonna have a really rough day uh, in these markets tomorrow, but it'll be interesting to see. But be aware that there is the potential that we get a very rigged number tomorrow in hopes that uh, this will allow the Fed uh, to slow it down and even pivot. 
Fed officials expect higher rates to stay in place meeting minutes show. We had the Fed uh, minutes today. Fed officials expect higher interest rates to remain in place until prices come down. This according to the minutes released uh, today. Uh, they reiterated rate hikes are likely to continue and higher rates will prevail until the problem is showing signs of resolving. So it does seem like the Fed is sticking uh, to its guns, that they're going to they're gonna stay somewhat aggressive. But I, I, again, if, if you believe like I do that real inflation is hovering around 20%, uh, 50 and 75 basis uh, point rate hikes are, are not going to do much. We are just chasing the tail uh, of inflation. But as long as they continue to raise rates and we have a slowing, massively slowing economy, we're seeing stagflation, this means that you better get ready for a collapsing economy. And if you're not preparing right now, you are so far behind. We're gonna see, I think, at some point, maybe by the end of this year to early next year, very possible that you know uh, the 30 year right now, 30 year fixed rate, mortgage is sitting at, I think, about 7.09%. Uh, I think we could break uh, we could break 8% by the end of this year. And next year, uh, we could break 10% very easily. Um, I Look, they can rig the data tomorrow, and, and maybe they won't. But we already know it's manipulated, because if they were being honest with us, we would be seeing uh, the inflation number at 18, 19, 20 percent. But it doesn't matter because when you go to the grocery store, when you pay your health insurance, when you go to, to the gas station, when, when you go to a retail store, you are paying more and more and more than likely you're getting less. When you go out to dinner, out to lunch, you're paying more, you're getting less. Uh, when you go and buy a, a box of cereal, you're, you're paying more, getting less. So uh, the average American isn't going to believe it because their pocketbooks are telling them. Their bank accounts are shrinking. The credit card balances are rising. And they understand that something is wrong and that inflation isn't going down. They're paying more and getting less. So no matter what they tell us tomorrow, you know the problem is much worse than we are being told. Here's one from The Hedge. Chicago Fed president says rate hikes will continue even if they lead to job losses. Charles, Charles Evans of the Chicago Fed told CNBC, if unemployment goes up, this is unfortunate. If it goes down, well, that's really, really difficult. But price stability makes the future a better place. Remember that when you're being evicted. Remember that when you're living in a tent. Remember that when you have to move back to your parents' house. Remember that when your kids aren't eating. Remember that when your car is being repossessed. repossessed. Remember that, that when you don't have a job and no opportunity. Remember that when you have to take your child to an urgent care and you have no money. So it's easy for these people to say this, and I don't disagree that rates have to aggressively go up, but unfortunately, the Fed really created a lot of this mess by printing so much money. And of course, all the stimulus uh, that the system passed out did not help anything. I mean, we've printed so much money. And so here we have the Fed now making an effort, yet the government, is paying off college tuition debt, it's sending money overseas, it's paying for this, it's paying for that. It's going on a spending spree while the uh, Fed is tightening the balance sheet and raising interest rates, a bad, bad combination. As inflation rages, more Americans are struggling to pay their bills. This was on Fox Business. Life is getting more and more expensive every day, literally. Uh, we, look at your utility bills uh, uh, to, to cool the house. It's going to be very expensive to heat the house uh, this year across America. Uh, it, it is getting so expensive just to live day to day. And that's, the, that's if you don't even have an emergency. Uh, so many people are one flat tire away from very, very big trouble. 40%, according to this article in a survey, are struggling to pay their bills. I mean, that right there tells you that we're going to have big trouble down the road that what is happening today this is a trend and it's heading in the wrong direction when you have 40 percent 
uh, of this country struggling to pay their bills, 80% of this country living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, you, you just connect the dots, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out and how bad this is about to get. When there is nothing in your savings account, the credit card limit has been hit, then what? What happens? Think about that. Think about what's going to happen to people when they have no no cash reserves, no money in the savings account, checking account, and they're using up their last credit cards and they're hitting those limits. What happens at that point? If these people do not have a good church, and a good church is very hard to find, if they don't have a good network of friends, a good network of friends is very hard to find, if they don't have a good family, these people are going to be forced with some very serious decisions. Um, many of these people are going to be forced to go homeless. And that really breaks my heart where good people uh, are, uh, uh, they're hanging on by a thread now. And many don't even realize it yet, but they're going to be homeless. And many of them right now are not sleeping at night because they know it. They know that they're, they're running into big trouble here. And my heart goes out to so many people. And this is why I've been begging begging people for three, four years to get ready because this avalanche is ready to come rushing down the mountain. It's going to take one snowflake and this thing is going to break loose and all bets are off. Everybody's on their own. And, you know, people, you know, used to judge me, criticize me, uh, tell me how wrong I was. Uh, they're not judging me now. They're not laughing now. They're not uh, criticizing me now. Uh, because many of these same people are in very, very big trouble. Many of these same people may be living in a tent at this point. Many of these people probably already had their cars repossessed, lost a job. Uh, now they are feeling the pain that you and I warned them of. Uh, I, I don't have a crystal ball. Uh, many of you in the comments were already talking about many of these uh, topics and concerns down in the comments two, three years ago. And I'm reading those and I'm connecting the dots just like many of you. And I listen to what, what's happening in people's lives. I look at my surroundings. I see what's happening uh, in retail, what's happening to the restaurants in my area, what's happening to the office buildings and the vacancies and vacancies popping up everywhere. And then reading those comments and people reporting the same thing in Indiana or Wisconsin or Illinois uh, or Arizona, seeing the same uh, problems happening in their area. So we began to see this trend forming a few years back and we all knew, you knew and I knew that it was time to really get ready. And I hope that uh, all of you out there are getting ready and continuing to get ready. And if you haven't gotten ready, if you have the means, I pray to God, you get out there tonight and you start preparing. Put some canned food away. Put some bottled water away. Um, Put some extra candles away. Put some cash away. Buy some gold. Buy some silver. Know how to protect yourself. Know how to protect your assets. There's something you could do every every day. And there's people out there that you know. Oh, I have, you know they'll they'll say they have everything. They're fully rounded. They're completely prepared. There's always something you can do to add to preparations. And remember, walk close to God, ladies and gentlemen. We are now in spiritual warfare. There's a lot of evil out there. And if you really believe that we're heading into some very dark times, then you better get really close to God because you're going to need God's protection and his direction. And I believe that he has woken me up. I believe he has woken you up and we must stay on the path because this is, you can relate this almost to the flood back in the beginning of the Bible where people laughed at Noah, took him about a hundred years to build that ark, laughing at him daily. People said it would never happen. It'll never be a storm, never be a flood, not going to happen. And people just went on their ways, partied, uh, did whatever they did. The laughing stopped as soon as the rain started. And now um, it is beginning to drizzle today, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the drops are coming down and people aren't laughing so much. Now they're getting worried. Now they're thinking, maybe I should have built my own ark. And we have to build our arcs right now. We've been building that ark. And that is the preparations, the gold, the silver, the food, uh, the, the water, uh, the gear, the essentials, uh, the mental mindset, getting the, better, the body in better shape, getting the spirit in be better shape, and 
getting the mind in better shape. These are all things that we've been working on. You don't just do this over a weekend. You don't do it over a week. This took years to get to this point to acquire all of these type of, of things that we're going to need and the correct tools that we're going to need to survive and a plan. Uh, I'm not saying it's too late for everybody. If you have the means, get out immediately and start preparing because it is beginning, the, the raindrops are beginning to come down. And if you don't have an arc, um, you're not coming to mind because the door is going to be shut, just like many of you are going to shut the door. You don't want people eating your food, eating your calories. You don't want to re be responsible for somebody's security. You don't want people stealing from you. Uh, you, you, know, you have enough for you. Your money, uh, your assets are for you. Your food and calories are for you and your family. Uh, and, and so people are going to have to, to uh, get ready. And everybody better start critically thinking and getting ready. I'm not here to take care of other people. I'm here to take care of myself and my family. And I hope that you do the same thing. PepsiCo's average product prices spike 17% year over year. So no matter what they tell us tomorrow, if, Pepsi, if a bag of potato chips and a bottle of Pepsi is spiking 17% year over year, that's a pretty good indicator that inflation is more than 8.3%. The company uh, posts a 9% uh, rise in the third quarter in sales. Now, companies like PepsiCo, they are just gonna continue to pass on the cost to you, raw materials, labor, transportation, you're all paying for it. Now, look, I enjoy a Pepsi uh, uh, with a burger, I enjoy a bag of chips. I, I, I enjoy uh, some of the bad things in life, no doubt about it. But one of the best things we could do right now is probably cut out a lot of the garbage. We know it's poison. We know it's bad for us. Yes, you know, I do enjoy it. Uh, I do uh, like a nice bag of chips and a, a burger and all that, just like most of you. But I do try to get to the gym. I do try to train. I do try to work out to kind of counteract all that. But I like to reward myself with some of this garbage sometimes. I'm, I'm just being honest. But, but what I want to do is, and what I've been trying to do, is cut some of this out of my daily life. Um, and doing so, you're, you're just going to reap the benefits getting you know these poisons out of your system, not taking in the sugar, not taking in these these oils and processed foods. And you're gonna you're gonna be in much better shape. Uh, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna have less chance of, of diabetes and cancer. So maybe this is a, a good time now that if if you know prices of this garbage are going up 17 percent year over year, maybe it's a good time to just like cut it out or at least cut back quite a bit on it. It's a good excuse now to just start cutting back. Grocery prices were up 13.5% in August. Uh, tomorrow's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, yet we're being told that inflation is 8.3%. PepsiCo uh, is saying that it's 17% and grocery prices say it's 13.5%. Yet we're being told it's only 8.3%. Here's another one from the hedge. Diesel back above $5. Gas prices continue to rise as ugly inflation returns. These people with these massive uh, F-250s and F-350s and these big Dodge uh, Cummins trucks, I mean, $150, $200 to fill one of these things up. Uh, and these people don't even really use these trucks for work purposes. They're just daily drivers. And, and look, if you want to drive a big truck, I think they're cool. I wouldn't mind having one one day, uh, but I would definitely you know, use it um, on the farm. But I get it. They're they're cool. They're nice. You feel safe. There's something you know about that big diesel engine. But 150, 200 dollars to fill these things up for a daily driver. How are how are people doing this? Uh, and the answer goes right back to credit cards. Here's another one from the hedge. PC shipments plunge 20 percent. Steepest drop in more than 20 years. So they're having lots of sales. They're dropping prices. It's not helping to move uh, PCs. Inflation is now forcing people to cut back on items like personal computers. And we're going to see more and more sales uh, as we get closer to the holidays and after the holidays. Yet inflation is forcing people now, not allowing them to buy certain items. And I think we're going to reach a point here where inflation gets so bad that 
people are going to be forced not to spend money. Uh, the, the only thing they're going to be spending on is probably gas and food. And people have been fighting inflation with credit cards, but we know that all credit cards have one thing in common. They all have a limit. And when that limit is hit, the credit cards don't work any longer. And this is when uh, people are going to get themselves into really, really big trouble. And they're digging such a deep hole now that how are they ever going to get out from the debt when the average APR on a credit card is 18.45%, 18.5%, ladies and gentlemen. Intel to cut thousands of jobs as PC demand slows. That's There's more news. You know, it's amazing with the hawkish news we got from the Fed today and more of the economic data that the market did not go down. The Dow Jones did not go down over a thousand points today, that the NASDAQ didn't go down three or 400 points today. Just going over the data and the hawkish uh, tone of the Fed. U.S. economy is doing well amid global economic uncertainty, says Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. This woman, and this is not to be judgmental, but I, I think she's very delusional. Does this woman go to the grocery store and shop for her own food? Does this woman go to the gas station and pump gas into her own car? I doubt it. I, I don't think that Janet Yellen is in touch with reality uh, or the reality of the U.S. economy because she doesn't go to the grocery store. She doesn't pump her own gas. And, and so she's completely delusional. There's no way that there's any truth in that whatsoever. U.S. economy is doing well. This is the sickest I've ever seen the U.S. economy in my life. And I think historically, this is probably the worst economy uh, in U.S. history. Uh, it, it's unbelievable what some of these people are putting out there. Trans-Pacific shipping rates plunge 75% as U.S. retail demand falters. I wonder what Ms. Yellen says about that. This is a warning to come uh, that this economy is dead. There is no helicopter now flying over dumping trillions of dollars into this economy like in 2020 and 2021. This is a warning to come, ladies and gentlemen. Things are slowing down. Think about how high these shipping rates were a year ago. We had 150 ships right outside Long Beach in LA. Now rates plunge 75% because US retail demand is plunging. Miss Yellen, is that a strong economy? I don't think so. Another article, Fox Business, California's drought adds to food inflation with tomatoes, onions, and garlic hit. About 94% of California had severe extreme or exceptional drought conditions last week. In July, that number was 97.5%. You add this to inflation and you add a drought to inflation, this is a deadly combination, deadly. And it means that every time you go to the grocery store, the food prices are gonna to continue to go up, up, and up. You go out to dinner, it's going to get more and more expensive. It's a bad, bad combination. Here's another one from CNBC. Here's how to avoid buying a flood damaged car following Hurricane Ian. And I bring this up because we are going to see so many scams taking place uh, because the economy is failing. The economy is dying. There's a lot of desperation and despair out there. People are looking to make some type of money. People are looking for a great deal. They're looking to save money. And so there's gonna be a lot of scammers out there, a lot of con artists out there. So watch out for the scams, watch out for the con artists. But according to this article, uh, a lot of cars, thousands of cars were flooded and damaged. And now what will happen to these cars? Well, they're gonna head up all over the country. And we'll probably see a lot of them right out here on the West Coast, they'll hit the auctions. They'll be on Craigslist. Uh, they'll be on the car lots. They'll be everywhere. But thousands of cars are going to be hitting the market and everybody's looking for a deal, right? Because used cars and new cars are so expensive, even though prices are beginning to come down, you're gonna probably see some great deals on automobiles and trucks very, very soon here. But beware of water damage. It affects electronics, lubricants, and mechanical systems. And you know, if it's a really good deal, you better do your homework and really know where that car came from. Uh, we saw this years ago after Katrina. This one uh, is gonna be much, much worse. We're gonna see a lot more cars uh, flood the US and everybody is gonna be looking for a deal because they're desperate, they don't have a lot of money. So people are gonna be very vulnerable. 
So do your homework, be extremely cautious. If, it, if it's too good to be true, it probably uh, is a bad deal. So buyer beware. So I just wanted to note that. Also, uh, really quick, uh, just a quick note on this whole uh, PayPal debacle. Uh, many of you know that uh, uh, I, I, I guess uh, PayPal sent out a message uh, days ago saying that, you know, basically if they didn't agree with what you said, didn't like your, your, your standing, uh, uh, maybe something uh, politically, socially, whatever it may be, uh, they could fine you $2,500. People didn't like that. They took it back, said, no, no, it was an accident. We didn't mean it. Well, uh, Monday, they lost $5 billion uh, in stock. Uh, year to date, they're down 57%. A year ago, at the high, they were $273 a share. Today, they're a little bit over $84 a share. You know, you have to, um, you have to think about this. You know, if you say something and a entity like this disagrees with you that they can find you, uh, how safe is your money? And it might start at PayPal, but then it goes to a bank, then it goes to a credit card company, then it goes, you know, t to, can you get an Uber, To can you get a plane ticket, and now, you know, you, you now you have a social score. You know, and this is why I don't keep all my money in the bank. And this is why you shouldn't keep all your money with PayPal or some electronic bank or entity. This is why it is extremely imperative now to be your own central bank and not let the system have all the control. If they have all your money, they have all the control. And so if we began to act more like our own financial planners and advisors and money managers and we acted like our own central banks, these entities would not have the control that they do. And I'm not here to get political. I don't know exactly what they meant, what they didn't mean, but I don't like it when an entity could say, if you don't agree with the way we think, and it could be right, it could be left, whatever. Uh, it could be a religious belief, whatever. Uh, but if you don't believe what we believe, we're gonna take your money. So be very, very cautious about how much money you have in the bank, how much money you have uh, in a PayPal, how much money you have on a computer screen, how much money you have uh, sitting in these financial institutions. Because unless you are 100% in control of your money, there is a third party counter risk. And if you say something somebody doesn't like, if you don't agree with somebody, if you have a different belief, um, maybe they take your money. Maybe they take those assets in that safe deposit box. So get out of the system the most that you can, ladies and gentlemen. That will empower you more and take away their power. And I think that we need to be our own central bank. So I wanted to close on that note. I hope everybody's having a great day. Please like this video. Make sure you share it. Uh, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you could do is subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you are alerted when the newest video drops. It costs nothing to subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing to hit the bell notification. Uh, so please support the channel. Share these videos all over social media. God bless all of you. Get out there. Prepare. Walk close to God. I look ex I, I look extremely uh, forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon. Have a blessed day.